What's up guys, it's Kaze here, and the Royal Rumble 2024 just ended, and man, it was a pretty good pay-per-view, guys. With everything going on in WWE right now, both good and bad, there was a lot for them to kind of just block out and focus on, and I was worried that all this outside noise would kind of outshine all the wrestlers that took part in every match tonight, and luckily it didn't. Like, I feel like every match got the time that it needed maybe one more could have probably gotten more time but we'll get to that later um but as far as like the shine that everybody needed they got it so i'm real happy about that the overall energy throughout the night was great like you could tell everybody was excited and it really did feel like a new beginning a new chapter of wwe has begun tonight so this pay-per-view really got me excited with what they're going to do in the future and all the stars that they had tonight a lot of the a lot of people actually surprised me with their performances today and it was just a hype feel like all throughout the night like you you were anticipating something big and all the big moments but even beyond this pay-per-view i feel like there are big things to come in wwe so this pay-per-view was a good starting point for all the good things and big things that are to come so as far as pacing of the night too, like it's usually difficult to host two Royal Rumbles in one night without it feeling like a drag, but they did pretty good as far as like how smooth the Royal Rumbles went. So without further ado, let's get into it. It started with the Women's Royal Rumble and this was such a good match like the women's royal rumble for me have been hit or miss for the past few years like sometimes they do it real well and then other times it's just like they did it because they had to do it this year was one of those times they really like hit every point for me i feel like like you had your big returns you had your big debuts you had your guest appearances and you had your young up-and-coming talent having tons of moments that built intrigue for people who may not know who they are to like be on the lookout for them naomi made her long awaited return to the company and i'm just so happy to see her back she really killed it she was in there for over an hour i believe about an hour and two minutes and i'm excited to see how they handle her character moving forward i know a big part of her reason for leaving was creative so hopefully they find a good spot for her it looked like the crowd wanted her back and it seemed like she was welcome back with open arms so i'm hoping that moving forward they know what they're doing with this character and actually do it we also got an appearance from tna knockout champion jordan grace so wwe lately has been looking to do more business with other wrestling companies which is unheard of but definitely welcome so if we get more surprise appearances like this i'm definitely down so they actually introduced this new counter on the corner of the screen to show how long a participant has been in the match this i appreciate it just because it's a lot better than hearing michael cole be like oh they've been in the match for 46 minutes and 37 seconds like to actually see it in real time makes it feel more like a sporting event. So I really appreciated that. I hope they continue to do that. So we got our truth spot in the match and they're starting to become a bit more comical for me. Like at first I was like, oh brother, it's our truth. But it's, it's one of those jokes that's been going on for so long that you got no choice but to laugh at it at a certain point. So our truth comes in thinking that this is the men's Royal Rumble and he gets eliminated by Nia Jax, even though he was never a participant. It was a nice little moment though. I enjoyed it. And speaking of Nia Jax, she looked incredible throughout the whole match. And I'm real happy about that just because she's getting a lot of heel heat. And in the women's division, there aren't too many people that the crowd really reacts to in that manner. So I like that they're using it and they're actually trying to build on that instead of like letting it fall to the side so i hope they keep up that good work naya actually did really well as far as executing the moves and stuff like that so i hope she can build on that as well and just 
you know, keep it moving, keep it pushing. So the reason they were building Naya up so much is because we get Jade Cargill finally debuting in WWE. And man, this was a spectacle to see. Dude, she fit in so well with all of these superstars in the ring. Like, she looked like she belonged there. She looked like she was ahead of the game, to be honest. So, shout out to her. I'm super excited to see. They even teased a possible match for her and Bianca Belair. And the crowd went crazy for that. Like, I'm hoping they could actually pull this off by WrestleMania. Like, that's going to be a great match. That'll be great for the card. Liv Morgan also returned and she's been through it. So I'm glad to see her back and thriving. Like she looked great. She looked excited to be there. Everybody was excited to see her. So I hope they do a lot with her as well. Like I'm glad we got a lot more faces to bring back to the women's division. And hopefully from now on, they can actually build from it instead of letting these characters go to waste because the crowds are connecting with a lot of these superstars and they're barely featured on TV. So the final three are Bailey, Liv Morgan, and Jade Cargill. And Bailey with a surprise win. Did not see this coming. I'm actually glad though, just because she is a staple in the women's division. And to see her character kind of just fall to the wayside, we don't need that. We need as many big names in that division as possible because that brings more attention and it brings more care to the program. So I'm giving this match a solid 8 out of 10. Like, it was pretty good. I'm even leaning towards 9. But to keep my rating system intact, I'm going to give it a, a solid 8. Next, I was actually surprised, but we had the Fatal 4-Way match between Roman Reigns, Randy Orton, LA Knight, and AJ Styles. And this helped the pacing a ton. Like, this was the match I was really interested in seeing just because I wanted to see a good quality match. A little disappointed there but you know it was good for the pacing so this match did really disappoint me I thought it would be a bit more action-packed and fast-paced or at least story driven but it was a pretty run-of-the-mill fatal four-way like there wasn't too many impressive spots solo came out again that's not an impressive spot but you know he was wearing the hoodie I don't know why he keeps wearing the hoodie we know it's you solo we know it's you. But all in all, this was your typical Roman Reigns championship defense match, just with three more people added to it. You know, you got your interference, you got your barricade spot, um, you got your multiple spears and multiple finishers. And although still good content, very repetitive, I found it. So I ended up giving this match a 5 out of 10. And that's just because I know these guys are all capable of putting on a better match the story behind it is actually pretty interesting the match itself just really under delivered for me like i've seen all these guys have much better hell fatal four-way matches i've seen these guys participate in better fatal four-way matches so this just wasn't it for me and a bit of a letdown so surprisingly the match with the biggest fight feel was kevin owens versus logan paul and i've never given my thoughts and opinions on logan paul's wrestling career but he's got some go in him for sure like he was already pretty athletic before doing this so what he was doing prior kind of matches perfectly with the wwe style he found his in-ring like style really well just because he's already a boxer, but he's like a high-flying boxer now. It's a pretty interesting style, to be honest. And like he seems to actually take the wrestling business serious or as serious as a Paul brother could. So, I mean, I respect his in-ring career. So this match was actually really good. They were working Kevin Owens' broken hand for most of the match and Logan Paul and Kevin Owens have just such good chemistry you really feel like Kevin Owens just doesn't like Logan Paul and you feel like Logan Paul is such a believable heel just because he's a real life heel so it just was a great match and they worked both characters real well they actually had a surprising finish for me just because I've never seen brass knucks used in this type of way so austin theory and 
Grayson Waller come down to the ring and they're distracting from the already hysteria going on because one of Logan Paul's uh, entourage members were trying to interfere in the match. So they slip Logan Paul brass knucks. Now we've seen this happen a ton of times already, but then Kevin Owens takes the brass knucks and he hits Logan Paul in the face with him. He pins and as the referee is going for the three, he notices Kevin Owens is still wearing the brass knucks and he disqualifies Kevin Owens and Logan Paul wins by DQ. I've never really seen a brass knucks finish like that. So that was actually cool to see them actually do something new. Not only that, but the match itself was really good. And the spots they were doing were pretty good as well. So, yeah, I'm giving this match a solid 7.5 out of 10. It wasn't too astonishing, but at the same time, it did cover a lot of ground. And it showed off both characters and also further the storyline just a bit more. So, yeah, props to these guys. Okay, so the last match of the night was the Men's Royal Rumble match. And like I said, just the pacing throughout the show was pretty good. There were only really four matches and not too many promos in between. So, yeah, it was actually a pretty smooth pay-per-view all in all. So, in this match, Andrade returns. We had a great showing from Carmelo Hayes. Yo, we also got to see Braun Breaker just lose control. That was insane. Like, the entire time he was in that match, I was impressed. Like, I actually can't wait for him to make the main roster. He should be coming up anytime soon. He just lost the NXT Championship. So, yeah, I'm excited to see him. I, this was actually my first time getting to actually see him. I haven't been able to keep up with NXT for the past two years. Just pretty much seeing what all the NXT talent have done throughout this whole pay-per-view, it makes me want to check it out. So I may be doing some NXT reviews. I definitely have some retro reviews that I could throw out there for NXT because, man, they've got a great history and a lot. Well, actually, every star we know and love today comes from NXT. So, yeah, definitely could check NXT out. So Gunther had a great showing as well. I know he was a lot of people's picks. I never really saw him fitting into the already crowded main event scene for WrestleMania. So them throwing him in that hat as well would have just been way too much. And he might have gotten drowned out. Like think of the stars that are being thrown into the hat for main event at WrestleMania. You got Cody Rhodes. You got CM Punk. Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, The Rock, like Gunther might have gotten drowned out in all that noise. So I'm glad that they didn't pull that trigger just yet. He's almost ready, though. He's definitely almost ready. So I, I nobody's wrong for picking him, but just not yet. So CM Punk made his long awaited return to the ring and he didn't disappoint like he was in there for a good minute. He mixed it up with a lot of stars that I actually can't wait to see him go against in the future. Um, this was pretty cool to see, to be honest. Uh, we saw a GTS for the first time in 10 years on WWE television. He makes it to the final two with Cody Rhodes. And this is where my palms got to sweating because you don't know who's going to win. So after basically... A 10 to 15 minute one-on-one -on -one match we have Cody Rhodes winning the Royal Rumble for a back-to-back -back years that's insane like I didn't think they'd pull that trigger it hasn't been done in 26 years they were saying so yeah shout out to Cody Rhodes the story continues I don't really know where they go from here and I guess that was the point to keep us intrigued because now Cody's name still is in the running for main event in WrestleMania against Roman. Even with The Rock's return, even with CM Punk's return, Cody Rhodes is still guaranteed that mania spot. So, 
man, I, I don't really know where they're going from here. That's probably the most intriguing part for me, just because around this time, you see the storylines all start to come together, but we still don't really have anything concrete yet. So this was a great show all in all. I'm giving the men's rumble match nine out of 10. It kept my attention the whole time for the show. I'll give it a solid seven out of 10. Roman's title match really brought it down. It was really run of the mill. But other than that, this was a pretty engaging show. So that's it for today, guys. Um, I'll catch you later on the next video. I've got a big one coming out this week. So until next time, keep it cosy.